So how do you heal from shame? You heal with emotional sobriety. So I'm so excited to bring this to you. And I want to tell you a little bit about how I made this connection. As you know, I see shame as really being at the core, the root of our psychological and emotional difficulties. It is uh, often called by other names. You're talking about shame when you say uh, people pleasing, perfectionism, workaholic, um, any sort of vice that you use that you struggle with, whether it is drugs and alcohol, eating disorders, overeating, compulsive shopping, gambling, all those kinds of things, that is talking about the root of shame, which is saying that I am not okay. I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. And all that is shame. So throughout the last few years, as I've really entered this world of public speaking and talk about shame, people say, well, how do you heal from shame? And I've come up with different methods and strategies to talk about specific tools, specific strategies. But then I came across the information on emotional sobriety. And just like shame encompasses the core of our difficulties, emotional sobriety captures the completion of the healing. And because of that, I am now bringing those two together where I'm talking about how to heal from shame, utilizing the principles of emotional sobriety. And emotional sobriety comes from the 12 step traditions. Typically, a lot of people in recovery have heard people talk about emotional sobriety because that is what Bill W from the AA, uh, the founder of Alcoholics Anonymous had brought up on the goal of recovery. Said, we, yes, you need to put that plug in the jug. You need to get sober, clean and sober, but that's not the end. You just do that so that you can become begin the journey of emotional sobriety. And that's a really involved complex uh, or concept. So I'm gonna introduce this concept to you Talk about what it is, because it really does sound different than what it sounds like. Like when I first heard the term emotional sobriety, I thought it was suggesting that we are free from emotions, that if that kind of concept, if you can just think straight, you'll be okay. But that's not what it's saying. It's saying that the avoidance of pain, the avoidance of emotion, the reaction to emotions of other people, this is the core of our suffering not the emotional experience. So when we're not emotionally sober, essentially what we're doing is we are demanding that life, people, circumstances are responding to our demands. They're meeting our expectations, our requirements, and our internal state of self, our sense of self, and our emotional well-being, our emotional peace is determined by these external factors. And when that happens, we're emotionally dependent. We can be have anxious attachment, avoidant attachment, because what happens when life and people and circumstances don't meet us on our terms, we then will have all sorts of defensive behaviors and reactions to that, like we'll pull away and become fiercely independent, or we'll constantly be seeking for this you need to be what I want you to be for me to be okay. I need you to soothe me. I need you to validate me. I need you to love me, to want me so that I do belong. So I am good enough. So I am worthwhile. And the reason why we never get a sense of it is because that doesn't come from the outside. That is an inside job. And that's not the kind of inside job where people get defensive and they pull away and say, I don't need anyone, I'll do it myself. That's a defensive avoidant approach. Emotional sobriety supports interdependence. However, it says that I don't demand life to be on my terms anymore. I now accept life with radical acceptance. I'm able to accept life on life's terms. And I meet life uh, where it's at, I, uh, where people are, circumstances, situations. I will meet life on life's terms and I will take the effective action and bring my best self to that situation. 
And even though it's distressing and upsetting, I can remain grounded in myself, in my sense of self, and be able to deal with that stressor. So we're not pain phobic anymore saying, I don't want to feel like upset or scared or anxious or hurt or lonely. We can find peace with all those emotions. And when we feel that find peace and can radically accept the things that are not in our control and go within and take responsibility to manage the things that are in our control, then we're not hiding anymore. We're not masking anymore. We can speak the truth and be fiercely honest with ourselves so that we can push through to healing. This is the paradox of change, that in order for me to change, I have to do that, which I don't want to do. So I, I heard Alan Berger, a emotional sobriety specialist say, when people, people don't want to admit they're a liar. So what they'll do is say, well, I just want to admit that. And I'll just say, start being honest. But you can't be honest until you can admit you're a liar. You actually have to say, I lie. I have been a liar in order to begin being honest. Because the second you can admit it, then you're honest. I had this personal experience recently where I was talking with um, somebody who was saying that they felt abandoned by me, which is the opposite of what I wanted them to feel and the opposite of how I think about myself and how I think about how I behaved. Now, when I'm emotionally dependent, I would get reactive and angry because they violated my expectation that they should know how hard I worked for them and they should not feel abandoned. So if I was in that place, I would get upset and I would say, what? how can you feel this way after all I've done and I've helped you and I've loved you? I can't believe it. I get hurt. And then I would go into my defenses, pull away or attack. But because I'm practicing emotional sobriety, I took a big breath and I could sit with this experience of the other person knowing that I am okay. I know that I did the best job I could. That I truly love this person and don't ever uh, consider my behavior of, of abandoning them. But I had to be open and curious, how is it that they're having that experience? And once I was, they didn't feel abandoned because what I learned was that reaction. What? How can you feel abandoned by me? Abandon them in that moment. Because I was prioritizing my needs for them to meet my expectation and follow my rules that they're supposed to know I'm there for them. But by saying, let me understand how you feel I'm not there for you. They felt I was there for them. That's the paradox of change. It's good news. So to find true emotional freedom and peace, emotional sobriety is going to be our method there. And I'm going to teach that to you. So please follow me, share this with other people. If you want to learn more, come to my website, sign up for my Inspired Living School. If you're watching this on my YouTube channel, please subscribe, like, share, and join me on this journey because we're going to journey this together. And I'm going to take you through the steps to have that emotional sobriety so you can bust through shame and find inner peace regardless of your circumstance. Thanks for joining me. I'm Dr. Sean Horn, licensed psychologist, the shame busting psychologist, and I'm so glad you're here and I appreciate your support. Thank you.